Hey guys, Max Power here, and today we're gonna to have a quick look at how to use Bandicam to record video games. Now, why would you wanna record video games? Basically, if you wanna record Let's Play videos or upload short snippets of video games you play to YouTube or some other uh, website, then that's basically why. Now, Bandicam is a really good way to do it. There's a couple of pluses, well, many pluses as to why you might wanna use Bandicam. Um, basically, firstly, it's got really good quality video. Uh, you can choose the encoding methods you want to use that suit your machine and your requirements, and it's really flexible. Uh, the inbuilt encoding is good. You can also use external codecs if you want to. Uh, it's easy to use and set up, uh, much easier than some of the other programs that are out there. It's not quite as flexible as some of the other programs, but if you just want a quick, way, easy way to get up and get going recording video games, Bandicam is a way to do it. Uh, it also allows you to record your webcam if you want to do that. Uh, and it, the main thing for me is why I chose Bandicam is it allows you to split your microphone and game audio. Now, why that's important is if you want to um, adjust the volume of your microphone separately to your game audio when you're um, editing your footage, say, in Premiere uh, after, then you can do that. You can also add effects to your voice or to the game sounds um, after, which is uh, separately to doing them both together, which is very important when you're editing. Uh, now, the main thing is that uh, Bandicam is not a free program. You can use a trial version, but it does have a watermark and it only limits your footage to 10 minutes. But basically, for $39, which is what it costs, it's definitely worth it. Uh, I'm sure some of the more resourceful of you out there will, will get it for for free, but I, I highly recommend supporting Bandicam and purchasing the software from the website. I'll provide a link in the description. Uh, it's a really, really good software. So basically, this is Bandicam itself. This is what happens when you start it up. Now, I've got this configured for how I want it at the moment, so we're just going to go through the settings that you need to be able to quickly set up to record a game. So the first thing is in this general tab, uh, choose your output folder. Now, that's going to be where you want to record video game footage too. I recommend using a separate hard drive to where your games are running from as it will affect the performance otherwise. So set your output folder and the rest of the settings on this don't really matter. They're all self-explanatory. If you want Bandicam window to always be on top, you can click that. Uh, start Bandicam, minimize the tray if you don't want it to pop up like this when you start it up. And you can also start Bandicam on Windows Startup if you want. Um, so. Okay, now there is one option that I can't show you in this recording mode, uh, of course it disables it, but basically I'll put a screenshot up in the video. Uh, as you'll see, there is an FPS uh, tab here for options. Now what you wanna do is you wanna show FPS overlay. So that's gonna show you the amount of frames per second uh, that your game is running at and recording at when you are recording. Now it doesn't show up in the recorded video, you can, there's an option to show that if you want, uh, but basically make sure you have that FPS uh, option ticked. I find it very handy. You can turn it off as well. You don't have to have it on. So next tab is video. The important ones here are the record slash stop hotkey. This is the button you're going to push in the game to start and stop the recording. So I use F12. Remember with F12, if you do use Steam, F12 is the hotkey for taking screenshots. So you might want to change that either in Bandicam or in Steam itself. Pause hotkey can also be useful. That's basically just for pausing the recording if you're going to start again on the same file. Um, so, you know, you've got to duck out for a minute or something, you can just pause the recording and it will stop recording, but allow you to restart again in that same file, not a new one. Uh, show mouse cursor, just make sure that's ticked, just basically shows your mouse cursor in games. It's not really that important. Add mouse click effects, we'll go through that later on. Now, if you want, you can add a webcam overlay, which we click. We can tick that. Um, we'll go through more of those advanced settings in a minute. And that's it. So basically we go into settings here. The first tab is sound. Now of course you want to record the sound that you are, um, that's your game sound. So that's important to have that ticked. Uh, the, next, the next box is save audio tracks while recording. What that does is it allows you to save a separate WAV file of each soundtrack you record. So in your output folder, you'll have an AVI file and one or two WAV files depending on your settings. This just saves splitting out the audio tracks later on. Next, choose your primary sound device. I use the Win7 sound. Uh, this is really going to depend on your system. You might have to play around with this to get the right settings, but Generally, Win7 sound is what you want, obviously depending on the operating system you have, but that's the main game sound. 
The secondary sound device is where you want to set your microphone. If you get if you've got a microphone or you want to have voiceover. Um, so I use the, the the blue Yeti stereo microphone. Now these options here, so two sound mixing, primary and secondary into one audio track. That's what you don't want to do. So you want to leave that unticked. Uh, so if you tick that, it's going to mix both the audio sources into one audio track and basically remove half the benefits of using Bandicam. So don't tick that. Uh, the other one is only record secondary device while pushing space. So that means if you want to tick that, you can make it so that only it'll only record the secondary device when you push space. Next thing, we go to webcam. This is where we can choose to add the webcam to our video. So I can tick that. Um, that gives us the options of the video size, like how big you want the video to be, the webcam you're going to use, um, and the position of the webcam on the screen. So if we like, you know, choose the right hand corner, top right hand corner, can hit preview, and as you can see, there's my face uh, recording this. So we'll turn that off for now. You don't want to see my face anymore. Next one is logo. You can add a logo or a watermark to video if you want. It's pretty self-explanatory, just like the webcam. Um, effects, this adds your mouse click effects. Basically, you can make it easier to follow your mouse on the video. It's mainly for desktop recording as I'm doing now. And the last one is the final options tab. Generally, just leave these as default. They're not that important. Uh, you might have to fiddle with these if you are having issues with performance and stuff, but we won't go too far into that now. So you hit your OK button. I won't hit OK because I don't want to save anything I just did. And the next one, important one, is the format settings. So this is the encoding settings and the format settings of how it's going to record. Now you can choose, you can use the presets if there's a certain thing you're doing it for, a certain size you want. Uh, they do work really well, but basically I just um, I prefer to set it manually because you can really set it to suit what you want to do. So basically I choose the full size. You can choose a custom resolution if you want to. Uh, frames per second, I use 30. You can, once again, adjust that to whatever you want. The codec, this is one of the most important settings. The codec's what is used to record the footage. Because I have a compatible video card, I use the NVIDIA encoding, and I highly recommend using it if you can, uh, as it results in a very small performance drop and has really good quality recording. Uh, otherwise, XVID is an XBest or one of the external codecs, uh, which some of the more advanced users will already know about. You can use external codecs too. Uh, so we can go into the settings of each codec. Now, this is going to be different. It's not all that important. Just make sure basically you're using a variable bitrate. A lot of reasons why, but it's just easier for editing and such later on. Uh, choose your quality. Start off with 100. If you are having performance issues when you're recording, you may need to drop that down. The audio, basically leave that as default. Just make sure it's set the same as your PC. Uh, don't fiddle with that too much unless you're having issues. So now we're back to um, Bandicam itself. All you've got to do now is um, have Bandicam open, launch your game. Now you want to make sure you tick this um, controller icon here. This is what will choose a DirectX slash OpenGL window, which is basically your games. I'm using the desktop record mode at the moment, which is another thing Bandicam can do, which is obviously another reason to buy it if you want to record desktop. But yep, click that, go into the game. Uh, you should be able to see the green frames per second in the top left-hand corner. Uh, when you hit the record hotkey, F12 in my case, it will turn red and it will tell you the frames per second that it's recording at. Now that's basically a really quick guide how to get going on Bandicam. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment or ask me on Twitter. Happy to answer what I can. Hope this video was helpful. Be sure to subscribe and like. Leave a comment if you want. Thanks.